Hi everyone and welcome to today's art chat. Linda Fissler is your host and with her is Tony Pro. I just want to remind everyone or let you know that you can type your questions for either Linda or Tony into the question section of your GoToWebinar control panel and I'll be here to relay those on to them on your behalf. So welcome Linda and Tony. How are you guys? Doing well. Doing wonderful. Yeah, so I want to uh, welcome Tony to the show. Tony's been with on uh, been with actually on the show before um, at least one other time. I thought I had you on actually two times, Tony, but um, I couldn't find that other. Yeah, with Michael with with Michael Harding. Yeah, I remember we that's, both, Yeah. I found that outline, but I couldn't. I thought I had you on again, but I guess maybe I didn't. So I am really really excited to have you on the show today. <laughs> well, thanks. It's great to be here. <laughs> yeah, we were just talking before we started out that. Um, Tony and, and I haven't actually um, seen each other, I guess, in, in a couple years, even though we kind of keep up with each other on Facebook, and I'd certainly, you know, private messaged him a couple times. Um, but, Tony, you've had some pretty major changes since the last time I saw you in L.A. Um, you've moved yeah. to San Antonio. So yep. tell us about that. Well, the last couple of years have been a pretty um, pretty roller coaster life, I would say, um, mm -hmm. you know, kind of all starting with the death of my dad uh, right. in, uh, um, I guess it's uh, 2013 now, uh, mm -hmm. it's going to be, gee, it's going to be three years in June, um, but that pretty much uh, was the start of the rest of my life, of how I thought about uh, my family, of how I thought about my artwork. Uh, I thought about you know how I feel about my career, you know where I was going, what I was doing, and a lot of it was contrasting to how my dad lived his life and what he deemed important. And um, so I, at the time, had been um, I'd been teaching at uh, Cal Lutheran University, and um, that was going pretty well. And uh, but I you know at the time we were looking into possibly um, opening up a, uh, an atelier or school uh, in the Thousand Oaks area that Cal Lutheran would have run and we've been looking into that and it just it never made um, it never kind of happened and at, at you know in coincidentally my uh, school that I went to and taught at for many years the California Art Institute mm -hmm. um, was pretty much suffering uh, primarily from uh, the um, the diagnosis of my former and late great uh, teacher Glenn Orbick, uh, the drawing right. teacher. He was he had been the head of that drawing program at California Art Institute for 25 years, oh, wow. and uh, he was diagnosed with brain cancer and passed away um, almost a year ago. It's just been about a year almost now. And that was basically the end of California Art Institute. Um, you know, it had basically shrunk to nothing. And we, uh, Cal Lutheran, you know, Cal Lutheran and I had been looking at kind of resurrecting it. But, you know, Los Angeles is uh, an interesting place for art. Um, you know, there's there's a lot of great artists that live in Los Angeles. And a lot of them teach out of their own studios now. And a lot of the art school, and there's a lot of art schools that teach representational art, mm -hmm. and they struggle because they compete against each other. And uh, you know, opening another school or resurrecting another school in a in an environment in an economy where um, you know the artists are teaching out of their own videos and not interested in teaching at schools anymore, or you know, unless they're getting paid a lot of money. Right. Uh, that just didn't make for a scenario for me to run a school, mm -hmm. and um, this uh, opportunity popped up here in San Antonio when I came to. Uh, I did some workshops. Uh, I did a couple workshops here at the Capini Academy of Fine Arts in San Antonio, and I got to know the board uh, pretty well and. Uh, and you know the city, and it was just it, it just felt so welcoming to you know me and my work, and uh, it seemed um, 
that people were so hungry to learn the type of drawing and painting that I was teaching mm -hmm. uh, and they you know they offered me a chance to come and be the executive director here and teach and sort of run this uh, program here and I just you know I couldn't turn it down um, yeah. it was a very very big decision for my wife and I though because uh, you know, it, you know, we both were born and raised in LA, and all of our family and friends are there. But, you know, financially, it made the most sense, uh, mm -hmm. just because of you know the economy and that kind of thing. And it is significantly cheaper to live in San Antonio here. And um, you know, so I did it, and I just it was you know having a, a a big expensive mortgage you know on my back was like having a big gorilla on my back in oh, yeah. in LA. And now without that, I don't have to, you know, the, the stress of uh, having to have that all the time, um, it's just, it's such a relief to not have that looming over me anymore. Right. And it, it, it was, and, and to be able to, because I hadn't been able to teach uh, figure drawing and, and figure painting and, and portrait painting um, since I left California Art Institute. I didn't teach that at Cal Lutheran. Um, I only taught beginning design at uh, Cal Lutheran, so I had really missed teaching painting and drawing from life, and um, so this gave me the opportunity to do that, and it really, you know, I really made the, that decision, of course, with my wife, but I made that decision um, after the death of Glenn uh, just to sort of carry the torch uh, for him, because as he did for Fred Fixler, um, and you know, there's several people carrying that torch as well. You had Jeff Watts with his great school down in yeah. uh, San Diego, and uh, but th this is this is what I thought I would do was come to Texas because you know the the, the Riley method and and my style of, of painting and drawing isn't taught anywhere in, in San Antonio or or Austin for that matter. Um, you know, all of South Texas doesn't have that, and uh, you know, since I've gotten down here, it's really um, it's inc it, it's really incredible the, the art community here, and how even the contemporary artists of how accepting they are of me and my work, and how excited people are to you know have me teaching here. You know, I have I'm having contemporary artists come study with me, no and I just I just wasn't getting that in Los Angeles. It was not uh, it wasn't a feeling I had in Los Angeles, and so I've really kind of. <clears throat> it kind of it feels like being born again almost um, in terms of uh, you know being born again as an artist you know right. and and mm -hmm. and that really is what 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 has become important to me in my life moving forward you know it's making sure my family's provided for you know they've got fantastic schools for my kids here um, you know they did in LA too but it, it just you know the cost involved was just too much and and mm -hmm. um, my shift has moved from when I was younger I wanted to be you know I, I had this vision and strive to be the greatest painter I could ever possibly be or, or you know whatever and these days I'm just that's just not important to me anymore you know yeah. painting to me and with this move has allowed me to just produce paintings and paint things um, more about what I want to say than more or less what I think would sell. So right. so after that long-winded explanation <laughs> of uh, the changes, this is kind of, this is where I'm at. And um, this is why I made this move. And, you know, the first few months were very tough. Um, I, I'll, I'll be honest with you. My wife and I had a very tough time. Uh, I moved here in October. My boys and I drove out uh, with the moving truck, and my wife and girl, my daughters came later, a few weeks later, and, um, you know, we had a tough time. It was, very, it was a very isolating feeling being away from family, and um, Christmas time we went home to visit in L.A., and, um, you know, it kind of reopened a couple of wounds of being gone, and I, you know, I was kind of feeling like, oh, gee, you know, maybe I made a huge mistake, and and um, but then, you know, a couple of days before we went home, uh, leave it to my good friend uh, Alexi Steele, 
who came over to see me and we sat and chatted and I told him how I was feeling and he he basically reassured me that I was doing the right thing and I was doing you know I was doing the right thing not only for my family but I was doing the right thing for art for representational art in general and that the Copini could be become really um, the center of, of uh, you know representational art education in in the south because uh, mm -hmm. certainly there's others you know there's others in New York and LA but this could be a central hub in the center of the country for that and he said just just you know don't don't waver from your your goal and don't waver from your initial gut feeling to go and boy I gotta tell you I when I got back to you know after the new year and I got back to Texas here I had a spring in my step Aww. and I just been my my you know my feet have been you know running I hit the ground running when I got back and um, you know we've 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 made lots of friends here now and we've you know we're you know got involved with a good church and uh, you know got the kids in the school at the church and and um, you know and and just the programs that we're putting together here at the Capini and uh, you know the board's great we have we all get along we have a, a great time here and um, so that's kind of that's kind of where I'm at these days. Um, yeah. I know that's a long that's a long story, but uh, yeah, yeah, that this was is kind good. of where this is my headspace these days, and uh, this is what I'm doing. Yeah, well, you know, certainly um, knowing you a little bit before you had made the move, and and knowing um, through friends more or less, George, uh, basically, you know, right, knowing right. how how the um, you know the, your father's death, and then uh, Greg was it Greg's? I'm sorry, Glenn's. The drawing Glenn, teacher, yeah. Glenn. Thank yeah. you. Just went out of my mind like the minute before I was going to say it. Um, yeah, you know those two deaths I know really impacted you. And when I heard that you were moving uh, to to Copini and and to uh, start doing that work, I I really felt like you know this was going to be really good for you, Tony. So. Somebody who doesn't know you as well is sitting here saying, "Yeah, this was the right move for you too." And and, and I think, um, you know, just hearing that in your voice too was was um, really interesting as well. I, and I know that wasn't an easy decision because moving out of L.A. Uh, from somebody who has always wanted to move to L.A. Yeah, <laughs> would have to be hard because I mean it's just a whole, almost like a whole other country in itself. It's so large. It, well, it is. It yeah, is. Yeah, you know. So but, and, you know, but but being that I was you know raised there and lived mm -hmm. there forty plus years, I've watched L.A. go from you know a place that was you know mildly easy to get around and manageable to yeah. you know in the <laughs> last twenty years, it's just. You can't do anything because it's just the traffic is so unbelievably bad, and it's so expensive to live there. And right. and you know it was just it was madness. And it, you really right. don't you really don't know how crazy it is until you move out <laughs> of the city until you're out of there. I mean, it takes me it doesn't yeah. take me more than 20 minutes to get anywhere in San Antonio. I yeah. get from one side of San Antonio to the other in 20 minutes. And I mean, it's 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 really crazy. I mean, it's it's phenomenal, and it it, it does it. Believe it or not, it does feel good. I mean, it's I strange know. at first, but but <laughs> you know, it's, yeah. and it's and it's really a it's really a fantastic city. I mean, it's a it, and it's a fantastic destination. It's it's been rated as like number two uh, as the um, country's best destinations for a low cost vacation. Uh, yeah. Because there's so much, there's so much to do here. There's so much culture, um, you know, and and the art scene, you know, it's it's. I mean, the, the art's interesting. It's it's some of it's different, but um, they do have a very strong and vibrant art scene here. Right. And uh, you know, it's sort of, I've been and you know, the last month or two, I've been kind of injecting myself into it. You know, I've been going to different openings around town and just meeting people like crazy and, right. you know, just trying to, you know, shake as many hands as I can and say hello and just look at what's here locally. Mm -hmm. And um, I've been having a lot of fun with that. It's great. Good, good. I'm glad they, um, it takes a little while to adjust to a big change like that, especially with all these big changes that occurred right before you made the decision to move out. But um, yeah, so I'm glad it's working out. So tell us a little bit about yeah. Copini. What what's the vision? What's what is what do you so uh, what do you think's coming well, down? Um, 
Well, I'll start with telling you who, because most people, including myself, before I came to San Antonio, I had never heard of Pompeo Capini. Mm -hmm. Pompeo Capini um, was a, an Italian-born sculptor who was trained in Florence, uh, academically, classically trained in Florence, um, immigrated to the United States here into New York um, around, I would say, turn of the century, uh, came to New York, um, worked in New York and Chicago. He had studios both in uh, New York and Chicago and, you know, began doing a lot of commission work and that sort of thing. Um, and wound up uh, down here in San Antonio and he moved to San Antonio uh, basically uh, w without much money hmm. and when he got here uh, San Antonio at the time was very almost village like and it reminded him a lot of Florence uh, which is why he settled here and uh, so he got here and then once he started uh, you know, working in the town, he became very well known, very well respected, uh, and he uh, did many, many commissions, um, you know, statues, monuments. Um, the most prominent one that he did is, which is called the Spirit of Sacrifice, uh, the Spirit of the Sacrifice, um, which is the Alamo Cenotaph, which is directly in front of the, the Alamo, and it's a very tall, white sort of obelisk shape um, and it's carved in uh, I believe Texas limestone uh, or granite I think it's granite um, and it's an absolute beautiful piece of sculpture and um, you know it's a it's a landmark for San Antonio it's I mean the Alamo when anybody thinks San Antonio they think the Alamo mm -hmm. and Pompeo Capini also, aside from being an artist, he was very big into um, his civic duties to the city and he was very into, uh, he was one of the ones who saved the Alamo from becoming, uh, you know, basically decimated. They were going to tear everything down and he saved the Alamo from being turned into, you know, a park kind of thing and um, so he, uh, so he's very well, I mean, he's very well known, respected here. And his work is just beautiful. And you could see um, a good portion of it um, on the website. I have one of the, one of my future uh, goals also is to actually do an entire website and a coffee table book of his work. Oh, wow. But uh, Capini um, started the academy here. First it was called um, the Classical Arts Fraternity. And he, at the time, he was a um, he was a professor at Trinity uh, University here in San Antonio, and I believe he was running the art department here there. And he started this classical arts fraternity as a place to it was it was a fraternity that uh, promoted representational art. So this was at the time when modern art was still was starting to really come into force you know in the 40s and the 50s and it was um, you know he was very uh, he, he was very kind of uh, he wasn't the kind of a he didn't reject modern art in the sense of he didn't call it art but he just didn't didn't like it and he wanted to keep representational art as the pinnacle art so he started this classical for classical arts fraternity to promote representational art and it would be a sort of a meeting group that you know artists in South Texas predominantly San Antonio at the time uh, was a group for just people to get together and sort of talk about art and I, you know I'm not sure if they actually ever did any paint outs or anything like that or any sculpting things <laughs> but he was teaching painting at um, Trinity he also um, you know, taught drawing and painting as well as um, being a sculptor. And uh, so then they renamed it, I, I'm, and I'm not exactly sure why he renamed I think he wanted to get the fraternity name out of it, and so he returned, uh, renamed it the Capini Academy of uh, Fine Arts. And um, the building that he uh, was living in, he had the studio that he had built, 
um, was basically the studio that the the big cenotaph was uh, sculpted in. So it's a very high ceiling, and the shape of it kind of mimics the shape of the studio mimics the cenotaph, the shape of it. Um, it's kind of a big, it's a, like a big L shape. And so at the time he was uh, married um, to a woman named Elizabeth de Barbieri, and they had um, uh, he had a um, woman named uh, Waldine Tausch who wanted to study with him, but um, Capini didn't want to take her on as a, a um, as a you know as a pupil, as an you know some like an understudy because. He didn't, uh, and this is going to sound sexist, but he didn't believe that um, women could be serious. A young woman couldn't be serious about being a serious sculptor because eventually they'd want to get married and have kids and da 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 da. So, which, and at the time she wasn't into that. And she, mm -hmm. so she basically, in order for him to teach her, she had to promise him that she would never get married and have kids. So oh, wow. she would study with him. And so he took her on, and that's exactly what she did. She never got married, never had kids, and what ended up happening was is that um, uh, Capini um, legally adopted her um, as his daughter, so that way when he passed on, um, you know, the school would eventually, you know, the, the, the school and grounds and all that and his trust would eventually go to her. Right. Uh, because... He started here being very poor, and then he got really wealthy with all the, you know, the commissions and all that. And then I guess he kind of he lived very lavishly, hmm. and then he went through his money pretty quick. But um, but the trust does, you know, you know the trust currently, you know, it, it has has money that was left to um, De Bar you know, Elizabeth De Barbieri, then when she passed, it was, it went to Waldine and Waldine passed in the early 1980s. Hmm. And so the Capini now, we're in our 80th year. Wow. Um, yeah, well, thank you. Um, we are, you know, we're a 501c3 C nonprofit and um, we have a membership of a, uh, right around 160 members. And you know, from from all over, mostly South Texas, um, we have some folks from Dallas and Fort Worth, uh, and we do have um, Michael Harding, Michael and Karen Harding, are patron members, out of state patron members. We have patron members wow. all around. Um, people. They are. They're fantastic folks. Mm -hmm. And so what we do here now is, um, I came on board, and there was already a, you know, there was already sort of a staff of teachers. Um, some of the local teachers here. Um, we have one of them is Gladys Roland de Morris, who's a fantastic painter, yes. and um, she was uh, kind of the fixture teacher, uh, you know, when I got here. And, and you know, we're so happy to have her because she's such a bright soul and she's a fantastic painter. And um, so we have her, and then uh, you know, a few other the, the local artists that we have, and you know, it's mainly classes and. Um, figure drawing, um, and then we have a lot of painting classes. And so, but I came basically to start um, expanding everything, and we're in the process of expanding to another, an annex space, because uh, right now we just have the one big studio where we run our classes in. So we're kind of limited space-wise now, but we're looking to expand out into uh another space downtown San Antonio, which has really become beautiful. I mean, the, the architecture downtown uh, and some of the buildings, these renovated buildings are just gorgeous. Mm -hmm. And they make for great, you know, they make for great art studios. Right. So uh, we're, we're doing that. We've been, uh, I've been bringing in a bunch of friends, uh, you know, good friends to do workshops. And we just had Clayton Beck here. And uh -huh. um, we had Dan, we had Dan Gerhardt's here uh, to do a demo in November, and um, we had Bella Bacci here in January to do a sculpture demo, and um, and we've got a pretty good lineup. It's not as big as say a Scottsdale Artist School lineup right now, but um, you know at some point hopefully we'll 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 get into that size. But uh, 
but I've got David Casson coming in October, and I'm putting together uh, dates for Max Ginsburg, and um, a bunch of other good good folks coming in to uh, you know, and it, it, as soon as I can twist George's arm to give me a, <laughs> an actual an actual date, there you uh, go. I'm going to have George. <laughs> I'm going to have George here to do a a, a landscape workshop and. Oh, that'd be um, great. But uh, but so far, but that's it. You know, I'm here just kind of running things. You know, it's different because you know I've always been involved with with uh, for profit schools, right? And this is the first uh, nonprofit with a board that I've had to deal with, right? And it's different. <laughs> it's interesting it because yeah. there's a lot of cooks in the kitchen, and you gotta you gotta make sure that you uh, you know you you listen to everybody's you know input. Right, and so you can't just kind of you know be a maverick and just do things on your own, yeah. um, and it's fine. You know, it keeps me in check. But uh, but I you know I've, I I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying the process, and um, you know I've I've had management background for many years of being in the entertainment industry when I was a creative director, so I've managed things before. So it's not that part of it's not new to me. Right, um, right. And I've got a, a small studio set up here at the school as well. So, you know, I do my admin and phone calls in the morning. And then I go into the, the studio and I work the rest of the day uh, on paintings. And, um, you know, if anybody needs me, I just come out. It's not a big deal. Um, right. It's pretty quiet. It's quiet enough to where I can get work done. And, you know, I I don't get interrupted nearly as much as I did when I was, um, a, you know, a college professor. <laughs> so, um, but uh, you know, so that's so that's that's us at the Capiti. I mean, we're we're growing, and uh, you're going to start seeing a lot more advertising, a lot more. You're going to see the Capiti name quite a bit more, um, you know, and and here, you know, uh, publications here and there and online. So, and yeah. uh, you know, we're just trying to we're trying to make a nice destination here in the center of the country, in a beautiful city, and which is very affordable to come visit. And, right. uh, you know, another option uh, of a place to have a great workshop experience. Right. Yeah. And I actually, um, I didn't make it down to San Antonio, but I made, I was at Austin for some work when I worked at Procter & Gamble. We had an offsite ah, in, yeah. in Austin, Texas. But, um, you know, Austin was beautiful and, and San Antonio was, what, like 90 minutes away maybe? Maybe an hour yeah, away? It's, yeah. Yeah. It's about an hour away. It depends yeah. on the traffic. Yeah, we just I just didn't have the opportunity to swing down there, but uh, some of the folks that were with me did go down. And we're talking probably back in 19, oh gosh, 99, 1990s, maybe maybe late 80s. I think I was there. So and at that time it was beautiful. So I can just imagine that it's just really gotten so much nicer. And and one thing that I, I did want to mention too, Tony, is um, I teach at a local art center here um, in Ohio and. Yeah, I I do appreciate the work that you're doing at the, at the Copini because you know I think these art centers are somewhat threatened if they don't start to really you know grab on to what they can become if you will instead yeah. of just being yeah. a local art center being more of a national place something because the the, the ones that are are very local and stay very local seem to be suffering a lot more than someone who has very been much so. You know, lucky enough to have someone like you to come on and, you know, your connections with the art community and, and things like that is really going to help that academy. So, um, you know, I, yeah, I salute you for doing it. I think it's great. And uh, the, Well, the I'll, be, I'll be honest with you. The, the reason why some of these smaller art community centers are having such a hard time is because mm -hmm. of these ridiculous paint and sip places that have become a fad <laughs> and have opened up. No I'm kidding. Being I'm being I'm being serious. That's what I it know, is. I know. I know. That's what, yeah. um, you know. And there, it, they've just every, there's a, a Pino's palette on every corner now, and it's right. like you know people think that that's what taking an art class is, and that's sad. I mean, it's great that yes, people are is. getting involved, but. You know what that's done to the local art schools that that may not be like an atelier style, but some of the local art schools that taught painting and drawing, uh, you know that that really hurt the business. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, and the the little art. You know, there's the nothing, little... there's nothing wrong with you know I'm all for capitalism, but for crying out loud, I mean, you know, if you're going to teach art, teach it the right way, you know. Yeah. Exactly. And. 
And that's, you know, we're kind of seeing that, I mean, that's like, what you said is absolutely true. It's, it's kind of like one of the things that are, it's, that's hurting the center down here. The center that, that I teach at has been around for um, oh, close to 60 years now. So, um, and it's, yeah. you know, it's, it's struggling right now. And uh, I teach there and, you know, we teach, I mean, I really teach art. <laughs> I don't, you know, yeah. it's not the paint and sip thing, you know. So, right, and, right. and the folks that, the, and the people that really get into that is, you know, are very very thankful that it's there. They they have a core of supporters like your your place does too, and it's just really, it, it's just sad to see some of this this stuff happening. So, but to get to you, let's talk a little bit about your direction in art. You um, you have uh, gone from you know, painting figures to painting Southwest art and and still figures as like um, there's mm -hmm. the uh, Arapaho chief that I remember like in my mind which is a beautiful painting and and then you also paint like the one is is in front of us and the ones that were re before this the the clown series I guess we can call that right so, right right yeah so talk a little bit about your direction and and if you could get into a little bit about um, we had said talked about the uh, consistency like um, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> right, sure, right. sure. So go ahead and talk. Um, <laughs> so, you know, so when my dad passed away, um, <clears throat> the night before uh, he passed away, I had had a phone conversation with him. Mm -hmm. And at the time, I had been thinking about, um, you know, going back to exploring Western art themes uh, because I, I was really raised around... Um, Western art. My parents were Western art collectors, mm -hmm. and w since I was a kid, my parents used to take me around to all the auctions and the shows. Um, you know, that the, we'd go to the CA show, the Cowboy Artists of America show, every year, and um, you, you know, and and so I'd go into these galleries, and I knew I knew used to know all the names of the artists, and and you know, I'd met several. Um, you know, very well-known, respected Western artists when I was young. Um, you know, we have video footage of it, me going in and out of museums and that kind of thing. And um, in fact, uh, there's video footage that I was recording when I was, uh, I think it was about 12 years old. And we were at the uh, Gilcrease Museum in Tulsa, Oklahoma. And at the time, there was a retrospective of Richard Schmid's work there. And so we have this old footage from the the early 80s of, and I was use, operating the camera, and I'm I was filming Richard Schmidt's work back then, and um, you know so I I and you know and of course my parents being collectors of Western art, uh, you know I grew up in a house full of Western art and American Indian artifacts. I mean my my we would go to the reservations every year. Um, you know, my mom used to buy, we used to get rugs and lots of Indian jewelry, and my mom used to deal in Indian jewelry, and my dad used to make jewelry, and he was in, into lapidary uh, before he became an artist. Ah, cool. And about the mid-80s, my dad, my dad was an anesthesiologist, and but he liked to have hobbies, you know, kind of <laughs> freed his mind in the evenings after working all day. Right. And so... Um, my brother, my older brother Greg, uh, had, was uh, in art school at the time, studying with um, Fred Fixler, mm -hmm. and he was in class with Morgan Weisling and you know a couple other people that you know became pretty well known. Mm -hmm. And um, so my dad kind of became intrigued with it, and he started taking drawing lessons from from Fred Fixler and you know some of the other teachers that were there at the time, and. Um, so he got into it and he started, you know, drawing Indians and painting Indians and uh, cowboys and that kind of thing. And he was really into doing drawings of Walter Brennan and a lot of old cowboys, Will Rogers and Tom Mix and William S. Hart. And uh, so this is what I grew up around. And when I got a little older, I started getting annoyed with it. Um, and I kind of, you know, as a, as a kid, you kind of naturally gravitate away from whatever it is your parents are doing. I'm sure a lot of people can <laughs> identify with that. Yep. Um, so, uh, you know, I kind of gravitated away from it. And then when I became an artist, I didn't really want to do, I, I would practice when I, when I was studying, when I was learning how to paint, I was teaching myself how to paint. I was in my dad's studio 
um, and I would just go into his reference files. He had a huge file cabinet full of photos that he took from years and years of just going to powwows and rodeos and going to the reservations. And I mean, you name it. Wow. He, he just had tons of stuff. And so hmm. I would just practice. That was how that that is how I would practice. I would pull out a a, a photograph, usually of an Indian or a cowboy or somebody, and I would paint it. You know, and and you know those paintings never saw the light of day because they usually got gessoed over or you know whatever <laughs> and so i did that for many years and once i got my painting chops up enough i started painting the things that i wanted to paint and fast forward you know 15 16 17 years um to the evening before my dad passed away i had been thinking about and considering going back to painting western art and my dad was really excited about it, and he said, "That's great, you know, it'd be great because my, you know, my dad just loved it. He loved Western art. He became a fairly well-known um, wildlife and Western artist and landscape artist. And and the next day he passed away, and uh, so I that you know, like any, you know, like any son who loses their father, you know, that mm -hmm. that, that last conversation is is the one that's." in your head for the rest of your life, right? And, and right. so I decided to start doing, um, you know, Western art again at the time and dedicate the body of work to my dad, which is what I did. And um, I, I had been doing, you know, some Western work for about a year, year and a half. And then, uh, you know, of course, all through that process, um, you know, my really head space was changed. What's that? I was going to say, it was just really, a, I think, a process of closure for you. Yeah, that's really exactly. You're mm -hmm. exactly right. You know, and then so the, after that, you know, it was just kind of, I got into this mode where I just didn't really, um, you know, it, it's kind of hard to put into words, but I, I, right. I wanted to start painting things that I had to say. You know, I, I, I had to or I wanted to start painting things that I really wanted to that I thought were either funny, like sarcasm, <laughs> or mm -hmm. I wanted to paint things that were, you know, because just the way the media has just jammed us with, I mean, you can't get away from, you know, <laughs> stories about Kanye West or Kim Kardashian <laughs> or right, these right. people who don't really, who are Adam. so divorced of talent <laughs> and you can't, you know, they don't matter. But yeah. <laughs> we have to constantly get jammed our faces with it. So yeah. I wanted to start painting that and show how ridiculous it was. And and yeah. um, so I started painting what I call sarcasm. Yeah. And sarcasm. So I, I my work kind of falls into three categories. You know, I have sarcasm, the works of sarcasm, which are, you know, um, the the clown series was really started with the 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 Bill Murray painting that I did and I just right. you know Bill Murray is just kind of a he's an icon that just doesn't care about you know anything else in terms of what people think of him or he doesn't you know he's just he's a right. very odd character but he's but he's a genius in terms of his his acting and how he can do things but he just doesn't care about what other people think of him so hence the mm. cigarette in his mouth and that kind of thing and and you know, and it was just, it was really a joke. It's really, it was a kind of a joke to, to, to do that painting, but it got such a reaction uh, all the way going up to um, getting on Jerry Saltz's desk, who's the, the art critic for uh, the uh, New York Magazine. Mm -hmm. um, and so I thought, well, you know, I can use this to, I can use this style of subject matter to talk about things that I want to talk about because if I want to get people's attention I have to do ridiculous things like this because these days in art nobody really cares about pretty girls you know, you know posing with the flowers or whatever they don't they don't you know I mean certainly there's a niche of course of people that you know that, do, yeah. that, that love seeing that and you open up a, an American art collector magazine and that's all you see you know right. it's just endless pretty girls and you know, still life, da 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 da, and that's great. Um, I don't have anything against that whatsoever because I'm certainly uh, one that does that kind of work. 
Right. But I needed something different. I needed to say something. Um, I'm not interested in, I mean, clearly I've adjusted my life so I don't necessarily have to make, uh, you know, well into the six figures to stay in L.A. anymore. So I'm not as interested in selling work as I used to be, which to make really good paintings and to make strong statements and paintings, uh, you have to do it, but it may not be something that people want to hang or they don't want to hang just yet, you know. Um, right. So I started, you know, doing these these clown paintings and, and you know, um, I did a couple of the celebrities, uh, you know, Robin Williams is our sad clown, mm-hmm. kind of talks about depression and, you know, what what depression can do to uh, an actor like Robin Williams. I mean, the world was, was rocked by his suicide. I was rocked right. by his suicide. I was a yeah. huge fan of his. Yeah. And uh, so, you know, and to get people to think about, you know, issues or to get people to think about, uh, you know, things like this, rather than, you know, getting a million of these memes thrown in your face on Facebook, <laughs> Right. You create a piece of fine art that really makes people stop and go, wow, somebody actually took the time to to do a painting of this, so it really must be important, you know? Yeah. And so, and then I started moving over to this ridiculous election that we've got going on <laughs> of these, yep. these uh, you know, basically what we're left with is these two, two, if you want to call them politicians, you know, um, Hillary Clinton and, and Donald Trump, um, it's ridiculous. I mean, so I I did both of them because I'm not going to be, you know, this is a nonpartisan thing. Right. Um, you know, you don't know how I feel about either one. Obviously, I'm not crazy about them, but um, <laughs> this is what this is what we're left with, and mm-hmm. and and it made people stop and think, you know, and so. Um, so this is kind of where I'm at with with how I feel about painting. Now, uh, the know, image I, that we're looking at. Hold on a second. The, the image that we're looking. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. I was just going to say. I think after, if you look at your Southwest series and, and painting, you know, the, the closure period, as I call it, you know, you were going through a closure period. And I think this is a natural extension of that. As in, okay, you know, I look back at my dad's work and it says this. And I look back at, at you know, other people's work, and it says this. So what's it say about Tony Pro? And I think that's this is that kind of like your natural progression into, you know, finding out what that body of work is going to be when, you know, your kids are older. Let's exactly. put it that way. <laughs> Let's put it that well, way. I don't right. want to say the other word, but you know what I'm saying. Yeah. But yeah, you know. So I think it's I think it was a natural progression from that, and I think the the way that you've been telling your story through all of these has been through art, not your words that you've been saying to us, but through your art, has, you can just, I can actually, and maybe it's because I know you a little bit, you know, I can actually see that journey happening. So yeah. I think it's pretty cool. Well, actually. that's, you know, that's really the, that's the goal. I mean, yeah. you know, I mean, art career, art, the, art's a funny thing. I mean, you see people, uh, I'm, and I'm not. I'm not going to use any names. It's just not. No, 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 I, no. I don't want to go there. But I mean, but you right. see people's art, different people's art careers, and you see some people not doing that great, and then you see people like who are nobody, and all of a sudden they're like, you know, the new flavor in town. <laughs> and a lot of times that happens because you know I notice they'll paint things that they probably normally wouldn't paint, but you get people that just want to paint to be popular or paint to be. Uh, or they paint to sell and make a lot of money, mm-hmm. and I, my headspace went through all that stuff. I mean, I—it's right. natural, you know. You're gonna we do all that, do. but yeah, yeah. But I mean, um, you know, I gotta, I gotta go home and look my kids in the face every night, and you know, um, I just, just wasn't, uh, you know, I'm not willing to do that. I mean, there's some, you know, I can't, I can't not paint beauty because I'm naturally drawn to beauty yes. as well. So, which is why I still do, you know, the pretty girl in front of the stained glass window because I like doing those kind of paintings. Yeah, um, yeah. I'm and attracted I love to Sargent and Zorn paintings. I'm attracted mm-hmm. to, you, you can't not 
want to paint like that, you know, and so that's why I still do them. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, you know, and I, I like period, time period piece paintings, you know. Mm -hmm. um, I have affinity for the, uh, you know, for the, you know, the early 20th century imagery and, uh, you know, the Victorian times. And, and um, you know, a lot of people say, well, why would you paint that? Or, you know, that's already been done. I said, well, you know, sure. I mean, everything in art's been done. <laughs> but um, it's just how you do it or how you, you know, you paint it. But uh, so that, so this is kind of where I'm at. So the, it all kind of falls into the sarcasm, beauty, and the West, basically, yeah. is what it falls into. And the new body of work that I'm working on now, I'm, I'm working, um, I started working on a, I'm working on a show that um, I haven't yet figured out where it's going to show. But um, I'm working on a show. It's called New Beginnings, mm -hmm. and it's literally going to be uh, people, places, things, um, you know, in, in the beauty and sarcasm and West category of my, you know, process of getting here. You know, being in San Antonio, so there's going to be uh, San Antonio is a beautiful city, especially when the sun is going down. Oh, uh, the yeah. amount of trees and the light here, and um, you know, one of the things that I wasn't used to, which I'm sure you are, living up up in uh, in the Midwest, <laughs> is that you know, Los Angeles doesn't, you know, California doesn't have water towers, you know, all around the you know the city. And uh, when I got to San Antonio, they're on an aquifer here, and there's mm -hmm. water towers all over the city, and some of them look. Uh, some of them to me look very sci-fi to me. Um, you know, they, it reminds me like at night because they light them up at night. They light up the bottoms of them and it just, the imagery of it reminds me of like War of the Worlds or something like that. So it, but they're very fascinating looking things and with some of the architecture. So I'm doing some um, very, uh, some, some fairly contemporary looking landscapes of, uh, you know, these water towers and, and, you know, some parts of the rest of the city and, um, and then also paint some of the people that I've met, you know, and some of these people that I'm, you know, that I'm meeting yeah. and, uh, you know, and also start painting, you know, some of the, some of the old, some of the cowboys that are here in Texas, you know, and, uh, so that's, that's kind of what's next on the block for me. And, you know, there may be another clown or two, but, you know, we'll see what happens. <laughs> yeah. But it's really kind of interesting. When you said that about water towers, I'm, I'm thinking with all of my visits to L.A., and it's like, you're absolutely right. I don't remember seeing one there. I, obviously, I didn't miss them because we have them all yeah, over no, in Ohio because we are uh, on yeah, the of course. Well, so. Yeah, sure. But, but <laughs> you know, I, when I visit Chicago, I mean, they're all over, you know, the Chicago suburbs and all that. And, but right. You know, when you, you don't really, I mean, you notice it when you visit a place that has that, but when you start living in a place like that, you just there. That's really the how you can kind of know where you're at because there's no mountains here per se. So you right. have to you just kind of like <laughs> scan the uh, you scan the skyline and you see the water towers. Yeah. And uh, yeah. they're really kind of cool. I mean, some of them are very cool looking, especially when the sun is setting. And you know, they're these big spheres, mm -hmm. and uh, or some of them are. And you know, they have very uh, you know very architecturally designed look to them. And I've been having fun painting them. They're 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 kind of interesting. So, you know, over the next course of the next few months, you guys are going to be seeing, uh, you know, some of those images and some oh, of the things that I've been working on here. So, yeah. So let's talk a little bit about um, painting a portrait and uh -huh. you're teaching drawing and and different things like that now. So, um, what are you seeing as the biggest struggle uh, when you paint a portrait? Not so much with you, because you've been doing them for a while. Like a beginning student, like give some advice on starting to paint portraits. Well, the number one, the I mean, the absolute number one issue that I see most when people are trying to learn how to paint portraits is that their drawing skills are not strong enough in drawing the head. Yep. Um, <laughs> you have problem. to learn how to draw the head. Um, because that's really the whole thing is 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 understanding the construction of the head mm -hmm. um, and being able to understand how to 
look at uh, your sitter um, and be able to uh, interpret what you're seeing and uh, basically you're, you're, you're taking what you see and you're designing the shapes and uh, you know values and edges you're, you're designing all of that onto a 2d surface mm -hmm. and you know that you because I get this a lot people want to take my portrait painting class and, and I said you know and I always ask well you know you know how much drawing have you had oh I know how to draw I know how to draw <laughs> you know, I took a class here. I've, oh, I've been drawing all my life. I've been drawing since I was a kid. Okay. And then so they come into the class, and it, you know, to me it looks like they'd never drawn a day in their life. <laughs> um, mainly because there's a certain way of drawing or a certain understanding of form that you need to have. Right. Now, whether that's, whether that's um, learned by cast drawing uh, to understand form, and be able to um, accurately draw, uh, you, you know, be able to accurately draw light and dark shapes, um, or if it's, you know, sort of doing a Riley method, kind of what we were taught through, um, which is, uh, you know, a solid constructed um, head using the planes of the head, and then what's called the abstraction of the of the uh, the head, mm -hmm. um, which is uh, a series of rhythms. Um, in the sort of musco skeleton 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 I didn't even say that right the, the uh, <laughs> basically includes the muscles and the skeleton and you know you finding rhythms throughout the forms in that right. so that having that knowledge is step number one I mean absolutely if you don't have that it's ice skating uphill because uh, you can, I mean, you can learn how to mix paint, and you may know how to mix the exact color and and value that you're looking at it. But if you don't know where or how to put it on the canvas, um, that's that's going to be the biggest problem right there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that would be that would be my number one suggestion, and you know. Um, and and not taking just any old head drawing class. I mean, you, you really want to study with somebody um, who knows what they're doing, or you know, using a book like the Loomis Andrew Loomis book. Um, you know, there's several there's several good books out there. Several great videos. Um, you know, I have uh, I still have my my Zoroya online um, online school where I have my my drawing teacher. Uh, has ten um, demos and classes. Uh, that was what I used. I mean, I studied with him for five, six years, mm -hmm. and um, you know that certainly gets gets you in the in the in the process of it. But again, it's mileage too. You know, just right. and you mileage have, of drawing. Go ahead. Yeah, and you have you have um, you have a couple videos yourself that you did, right? Yes, I do. I have yes. um, a couple. I have an Alla Prima portrait uh, painting DVD of my dad, and then I have another one that I do of that, that I have, um, which is painting how to paint from a photograph, uh, but to make it look like it's done from life. Um, and those are on those are DVD or, or available on demand on Zoroya.com, uh, and that's Z A R O L L A, which is a uh, Kind of a, it's not an acronym, but it's 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 Zorn, Sergeant, and Soroya all combined into one word. Yeah. Which is what that means. <laughs> right, right. That's yeah. Because before I was thinking, okay, never mind. We won't go there. <laughs> so, spell it again. For, spell it again for for folks so that they know. So it's Z as in zebra. A R O L L A dot com. Okay, great. And then. And we um, have. Uh, there's there's lots of different uh, video. We've got Dan Gerhardt's on there. We got Jeremy Lipking, uh, myself, Clayton Beck. In fact, I'm about to release a new Clayton Beck uh, a la prima portrait uh, this week. In fact, uh, he did a demo here, and I we filmed it in HD, and um, it's packed with information. Uh, Cl Clayton's a great teacher, yes. so uh, that one's coming out this week, and uh, so we still. But and you know, but but more importantly, I've got. Um, 
I've got my teacher Glenn on there, which is the only uh, recorded classes, you know, full classes of his uh, available, unfortunately. And I'm kicking myself. I did not do one on the figure for him. Uh, we only did a head drawing. And we always talked about it, but we never got around to it. Aww. So th th that's another word of advice. If you ever want to with somebody and you just can't get around to it, just do it <laughs> before yeah. it's too late. Absolutely. Yeah. So um, one of the things that I have been doing, and, and again, it isn't something, it's not instruction, but it, I think it certainly helps our, our live gesture type live portrait sessions where, you know, I'm, it's hit or miss whether or not I capture it, but um, it certainly gets my mind thinking in a different way, and um, I was just curious uh, about your feeling about those, like live portrait um, sessions or gesture sessions, sketching. Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, they're very important. Um, are you talking about in the commission setting, or, or what are you referring to? No, no, just, you know, a group of artists that get together, hire out some models, and um, have fun. Oh, yeah. Well, they, kind of see, what we, what we do here, um, we actually have, uh, we, you know, go, first of all, going to open sessions, or, you know, I call them uninstructed sessions. Those, mm -hmm. are, those are great at art schools. But, yeah, if you have a group of uh, portrait um, painters, uh, I mean, that's, that's a great way, especially if you make it a weekly thing, Mm -hmm. That's a great way of just building your skills, you know, because, you know, painting from life or drawing from life is um, very, very important. And the more you do at it, the better you're going to get at it. So um, if you can, you know, get some people together, because that way you can share the cost of the model, which is right. always tough for artists. Mm -hmm. um, I highly recommend doing that. We offer, here at the Capini, we offer... Uh, we have a um, open model sessions on Wednesday and Thursday nights, and uh, I also host what I what I started here was a meetup group. Uh, and if you don't know what meetup is, it is a yeah, I'm on it. It's cool, but go ahead. <laughs> yeah, meetup is a as a um, a website which has a you know has an app as well on on i you know on phone devices and that kind of thing. Okay. But meetup is basically a website that um, that groups from pretty much all walks of life. I mean, if you if you can think of a hobby or an interest, there's a meetup group for it, uh, right. particularly in the larger cities, larger metropolitan areas. And San Antonio is loaded with meetup groups. I mean, they've got UFO sighting meetup groups. I mean, it's just it's very <laughs> some of it's very strange. But I started the um, San Antonio Life Painters group, um, and we do that here once a month at the Capini, and I bring in costume models. Um, and I've been finding and researching people who, and actually um, one of the best places to get costumed people and who are usually very willing to come sit is the um, the SCA group, which is uh, the group that, that sort of reenacts and, uh, you know, Renaissance times. You know, a lot of them, most of them always are the ones who are participating in Renaissance fairs, but right. they go above and beyond what your standard Renaissance fair is. They they actually promote, um, it's basically more about educating people about, you know, the Renaissance times and what people wore and what, you know, how people acted and they have their own personas and all that. And there's a very big group here in San Antonio that I connected with and, I I got you know we got a, I got a couple of models and we had one a couple months ago, uh, which is fantastic. You know they've got these big medieval outfits and crowns and you know weapons and and it's just a lot of fun to paint. You know they bring right. it's basically yeah. like a like you're painting a a figure or a a portrait with a still life, you know because mm -hmm. they're wearing a, a silver crown or you know whatever you know they're wearing jewelry. So having a costume model. Uh, you know, and it's fun. And of course, you can hear, you know, getting to know the model is part of the process too. You know, right. So you get to hear their stories and and that kind of thing, and that just engages people and it keeps people engaged coming. You know, week after week or every month. You know, however often you do it. And but like I said, every time you, you know, the more you 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 have uh, life, you know, life model experience. Uh, you're going to get better. It's a natural thing. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, thanks for that. So we are at 2 o'clock, and uh, if you have any questions for Tony that you'd like to ask, uh, please type those in because we're at the point where we do our live Q&A. Um, while we're getting, while Sarah's getting some questions together and hopefully folks are typing them in, uh, Tony, what kind of workshops and exhibitions and stuff do you have coming up as well as uh, Copini? Uh, well, for me, um, everything right now is pretty much um, my show building. Uh, and so I've been pretty much working on Copini, you know, getting this place up and off the ground. But I am, um, one of my pieces, um, Her Day Out 3, is going to be in the um, OPA National Show, which yes. is uh, in May, and that'll be up in Dallas mm. at uh, Southwest Gallery of Art. And I'm actually going to be heading up there that weekend, so I will be there uh, to say hi to everybody, and um, it'll be good to see everybody. I haven't been uh, involved with the OPA in many years, yeah. um, so it'll be good to get back and see everybody there, and uh, you know, have some fun, and um, you know, and uh, and of course, a lot of the, uh, you know, I know a lot of the vendors that are be there, and Simi's going to be there from Rosemary Brushes, and oh, good. she's going to come. Yeah, I'm going to drive her back down here, and she's going to do brush demo for us down here in San Antonio, and nice. um, and hopefully I can twist Michael Harding's arm to come down <laughs> as well, uh, so I'll get to see him. Yeah. And, uh, come a hug for me. Yeah. And, um, you know, and it's just right now, it's and then it'll just be building a body of work, you know, another body of right. work that accurately represents, you know, my current life. Yeah. So, Sounds good. Um, and then, uh, you know, in a, you know, the Capini events, um, you know, I, I'd urge everybody to go on to the, our website, which is uh, www.thecopini, which is spelled C-O-P-P-I-N-I dot org. So, thecopini dot org. Okay. And you can see all of our, we got Ramel De La Torre coming uh, uh, in April. And uh, that's going to be a great workshop. And we have uh, in May we've got Sabin Howard uh, coming uh, in conjunction with the Rodin exhibition at the San Antonio Museum of Art. He's oh, going to be wow. doing a draw drawing demonstration. He's a fabulous draftsman and sculptor. Yeah. Uh, he was just awarded the big um, uh, World War One monument uh, that he's going to be doing the sculpture of. So oh. that should be a lot, a lot of fun. Yeah. And uh yeah, and so I uh, know we're also looking forward to seeing Dave Casson in October and uh we'll be seeing Max Ginsburg in the fall and uh Jung Huang will be doing a still life uh workshop in December and he's always very popular. He's yeah. a fantastic still life artist. And um you know, there's going to be more added uh cuz I'm slowly getting uh people in in the uh, on the list, it just you know it takes time, and uh, you know, and probably somewhere in there I'll do a workshop myself here. Is but mostly I've been just to, uh, teaching weekly here, so that's right. that's that's enough for me. I gotta be able to go home and see my family at night. So right. Yeah. Well, it's, and you've got uh, all your I don't want to do those. too much. Yeah. yeah. It's a lot. It's a lot to do. Yeah. Yeah. I bet. So Sarah, can you unmute, unmute yourself? And do we have any questions? Coming in. Hi guys. Hi. Uh, we did a question here from Carla. Uh, Carla says, I'm so enamored of the clown series. Are any prints of them available for purchase? The clown series um, images, they're the one of, um, there may be some available. I, I did a limited run of uh, really high end Giclees of Bill Murray. Um, and those ones, uh, uh, the Bill Murray ones and the um, the one of Donald Trump is available through. Um, let's see. Let me get that address here. Uh, uh, another really well known um, artist. Uh, he's a uh, urban artist named Justin Bua. Um, my prints are sold through his store. Um, from the clown series he uh, he's been handling that for me um, he that one is if you go to justinbua.com uh, j u s t i n 
B-U-A dot com. Um, there might be some available. If you just uh, send them an email, there might be some available left. I haven't. They're in LA, and I haven't uh, had a conversation with uh, with the rep there to find out how many they have left because it is a limited run. Um, but uh, and then I may at some point be doing some other ones soon. But those are the only two right now. I like the Jeffrey Coons. Um Balloon dog. Like <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that one made me chuckle while while you were talking. I was over here kind of chuckling a little bit. So, <laughs> okay, great. So, um, Sarah, anything else? This was taken um, from your no, sketch. Those are, that's yeah. the only question so far. So, if you guys okay. have a question, please type it in. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah. So we've gotten all the websites. That, um, I don't know, Sarah, did you capture some of those so that you can put those in the email that comes out as well? Uh, I'll go back and get them. <laughs> okay. I think I can probably send, send you some too because I kind of wrote some of them down. So we'll get that okay, together. Cool. And um, Tony, is there anything else you want to add? Um, I'm trying to think. I, I, I think I've <laughs> put, spot, put everything. I? Put it, I put a, no, I put a lot out there already. <laughs> yeah, uh, just, you Just, you know, but... The primary thing right now is just just go to the Capini website. Um, there is a when you go to the Capini website, there is a newsletter um, sign up sheet that pops up right on your there's a little pop up that comes up right when you log in. Uh, just sign up for the newsletter. Um, they're not we're not obnoxious. We don't send out a ton of stuff. I only send out uh, if you're not a member of the Capini, I only send out maybe once every three weeks, three to weeks to a month about new upcoming workshops or if I if I whenever I um, uh, bring in somebody new for a new workshop that goes up for sale I send it out immediately so people have a chance to you know to to um, to buy in and get registered so they can get a, a seat in one of these great workshops that are coming in so mm -hmm. so if you're in uh, anywhere in reach of uh, Texas uh, instead of flying all the way to uh, you know, Arizona or somewhere, uh, you know, you don't want to fly too far if you're close by. Um, we are uh, going to be a great venue for, um, you know, a great place to visit, great place to paint, great place to see art, and of course a great school to, um, you know, take workshops and sort of see and get involved uh, what we're doing here. So that's the Copini.org, T-H-E-C-O-P-P-I-N-I.org. Okay, great. Any other questions? This is your last chance, guys. <laughs> so if you're listening. Um, no, I that, don't see any. Don't see any? Okay. And one thing that I just wanted to bring up, too, um, for the folks that have listened and will be listening, if you're going to be in the Cleveland, Tennessee area, West Polk County area in May, or uh, if you want to drive up, I'll be doing some book signings there, uh, as well as hopefully over in Memphis. I'm talking with somebody over in Memphis as well. So we'll have about three or four book signings um, signed up or in place to do down there in May, starting around May 20th. And uh, I'd love for you guys to stop by and say hello. And um, you know, so that way I get to see you guys. So I know there's some folks that are listening that are around that area. So um, make sure you stop by. It's, they're going to be at the library there in Cleveland, Tennessee, and in West Polk Library. And then in Memphis, we'll be at the booksellers um, there. So just wanted to mention that. And I also just wanted, Tony, to say thank you to you as well. Um, I know that it, it's crazy right now for you with starting up uh, there at the Copini and, and everything. And I do appreciate your friendship, and I appreciate the fact that you came on the show and told us all about you. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you very much for having me on. This is uh, It's great to connect to all your listeners again and, of course, to chat with you, Linda, and been way too long, yes, and uh, yeah. hopefully it won't be. Hopefully it won't be too long uh, until we get to see each other again and share a glass of wine. Yeah, well, there's um, there's might be if I can talk Debbie into it again or Deborah into it again. Maybe I can um, head down to see you in San Antonio sometime, do a book signing there, and maybe do some art with right. you guys too as well. So absolutely, we'll that'd be great. That worked out. Yeah, tell a little bit about that. Yeah. All right, I will. Okay, so Sarah. Over to you. 
All right. Thank you guys so much. Uh, just a reminder to everyone, we were recording today's uh, session, so it will be up on our YouTube, and you can find it on artistnetwork.com uh, slash art hyphen chat. And we have our special coupon code for you. Uh, ArtChat10 can be used at northlightshop.com to save 10% off your entire order. So if you shop with us, please be sure to use that. And you can visit artistnetworkuniversity.com to find online uh, art courses and artistnetwork.tv for our videos. So uh, Linda, do you have, want to say anything about the next art chat that's coming up? Well, um, we're going to stay in the, the friend zone here, I guess you can say, because I think it is on April, oh gosh, is it the 6th? 6th, I believe. Yeah, yeah. Let, me, let me look at April real quick because I don't want to, yes, April the 6th at, uh, I think it's 1 o'clock our time, we're going to talk with George Gallo. So um, 1 o'clock talk our time is Eastern time. It'll be morning time for George. So he's why do you want to why do you want to talk to that bum? <laughs> I knew you. I knew you'd have a comment, honey. <laughs> yeah, he, he's um, going to be heading out, I guess, the following week to the plain air um, convention where he's going to be on center stage doing some painting. I think there for that. So uh, we're going to be talking about color relationships, color harmony. You know, all that good stuff. Ask, so, ask him about his ask him about his front tooth too. Oh, okay. I'll have to do that. I'm, mar I'm marking it down now. <laughs> okay. I <laughs> got that listed. <laughs> yeah, I will. So George is always fun anyway. And, and um, like I said, it, it, it kind of, it's kind of fitting that we, did, you know, we talked with Tony this month and then we're going to talk with George next month. So. And then in May, we have um, Wham! coming up. Um, this, um, Deborah Kears is, is finding it, and Deborah, if I didn't pronounce your last name correctly, um, I'm sorry about that. <laughs> but I, actually, Deborah and I have never actually talked in person. So, um, but and her group of women mentors will be joining us and talking about how how to form a art artist mentors group. So, that's what WAM stands for. So, that's all we've got coming up. Awesome. Well, we hope you guys uh, will join us for the next Art Chats, and thanks everyone for listening today, and thank you so much, Tony and Linda, for being here. Yeah, thank, thank you, you for guys. hosting us. Yeah. All and right. We'll see you all later. Have a great day, everyone. <laughs> yep. Yeah, bye. Thanks, Tony. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Bye. Bye-bye.